but in Garnon Upgrade, Santi Magistar is a pretty good hammer, but lots of useful things to it. You get status immunity while it's in your hands, it has lifesteal, very high slam radius, and all in all, very good evolutions. If you like hammers, you will love it, because it is so build friendly to fit it everywhere. And that will be a future video for sure. I really want to check out its flexibility, but for this one, we are looking at a regular Magistar and its ability to help none other than Korra, a frame that's widely accepted as the best farming frame in the game. The reason we are focusing on the regular version here is because it gets higher evolution bonuses. And there's one bonus in particular that pretty much on its own establishes the position of this weapon. And that's 4th evolution, critical parallel, adding 16% extra base critical chance and more importantly plus 1x base critical damage. How come this is so important you might ask? Especially when the critical chance bonus we get is merely 16%. And it's weaker than some others like Sebear with 25% or Ceramic Dagger with 30%. Well, with Korra's stat stick, we're usually looking at the very high tier criticals, especially for Steel Path Endurance where we use a Slash build. We use Blood Rush, Sacrificial Steel and often Ribbons with Critical Chance. Yes, Critical Chance difference against Sebear's Evolution bonus will result in hitting a tier low critical with Magistar at max combo. But, with comparable builds, that 3x base critical multiplier will result in higher total critical damage. So for example, if we compare similar builds, Whipclaw with a Sebear will reach close to 600% total critical chance, while Whipclaw with Magistar will be just below 500%. There's a clear critical chance advantage for Sebear, and there's no doubt about it. But even if Whipclaw with Sebear hits tier 6 critical and Magistar hits tier 5, Total damage is still in favor of Magistar and by about 20%. That's a huge advantage. Only if Magistar hits two tiers low or critical, then damage is comparable between those two. But on average, obviously Magistar wins and by a long shot. 3x is also huge because of how critical damage stacking works. Orange critical is not just critical damage plus critical damage. Instead of that, game does total critical damage plus total critical damage minus 1. You lose 1x of the total critical damage and higher the critical damage is, smaller the loss, percentage wise. Which is more noticeable when we reach tier 4 higher criticals, which Quora does with ease. Incarnate Saber has a lot more utility compared to Magistar. Allows for faster combo building, has bonus combo duration, and all that's nice and useful. But Korra is mostly utilized in long farming missions, so building that combo is only done once. We don't lose it, we just whip our way through waves and waves. That's why I don't find much value in that utility. Bonus damage on triggering Incarnon form every 3 minutes is additive, so accumulating Whipclaw just makes it a diminished gain. That's why most of my focus is just on total damage output and that precious critical damage increase. And critical damage and damage are the best ways of increasing your bleed proc damage. With all that, I think Magistar and Garnon is the best statistic for Korra's Whipclaw. But here's the question. Is it a must-have? Absolutely not. Korra has done fine since her introduction. She carries the steel pad with ease, without ribbons, and on regular statistics. People rarely do more than an hour or two of farming at a time, so most players don't reach levels where this difference is too important. But what's most important for loot farming is that Magistar's damage advantage should not result in more loot per run. And that's because on one hour runs, enemies get melted with a single bleed proc. At those levels it doesn't really matter if that bleed proc is 200,000 or 300,000 damage. I think any weapon can give you tons of loot, and a lot of Incarnon weapons will give you spicy boost over that. So, while it seems to be the best, it is not a must. But for core enthusiasts who just love their BDSM spider lady, this is something to strive for in order to maximize her. I certainly feel lucky that I got such ribbon roll. I bought an unrolled ribbon specifically in preparation for this video and really didn't expect nearly perfect roll or a slash whip claw. And the elephant in the room is whether this stays as a feature for semi-exalted weapons. And honestly, I don't know the answer. I think it should stay because it's a very late game upgrade and while there is a prestige in having your frames with optimal builds, it does not unlock any power level we didn't have before. Either way, D is very slow with these things because power creep makes profits from Riven money 
So we can be pretty much positive that this will stay for at least a year or two before the challenges it. But I really doubt they will, because it's so far down the path that not too many people will have it, so it won't create a situation where that's the only thing that's being used. So, again, while it seems to be the best option, it is not a must-have. Any weapon with above average driven disposition will net you devastating results. But the matter of fact is that Magistar, even without a ribbon, is likely better than any ribboned stat stick, or at least on par with it. I don't know what to expect for Magistar's ribbon disposition because, as is now, it has one of the highest ones. We'll see what'll happen. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.